four of you, and you know, that joke never gets old after 25 years of being a pastor. We can still pull out the uh, good old chestnuts. Uh, City Heart Church, uh, just up from the Kabulcha RSL, not McDonald's way, but we're straight ahead. If you head there today at 2 o'clock, we have a commissioning service for all of our chaplains, all of our RI teachers. Uh, that'll be happening at 2 o'clock. It's also their birthday today, I believe, as well. So they're just staying, the people that go there, they're just staying there all day. Uh, but you get to go home and then come back if you want to be part of that. Um, it's 2 o'clock today, commissioning service for chaplains and RI and teachers. So please, yeah, come and join me and others who will be there and celebrate that day. The principal uh, of... Uh, let me get it right, Australian Christian College, who will be speaking. Um, today is there as well, so that would be, that would be good. If you want to mark in your diary, uh, March the 8th, Sunday, March the 8th, uh, we'll have Glenis here. Uh, we'll be launching our Operation Christmas Child. She'll speak to you ladies on the Tuesday. She'll come and be with us on the Sunday. And last year, a fantastic project that we embraced as shoeboxes went out to third world countries. Um, she'll give you all the information. There's a few changes this year, uh, so she'll fill us in on all the how to pack gifts, how to send gifts, how to keep things wrapped, and all those sort of things. So Sunday, the 8th of March, we'll be launching our Operation Christmas Child again. I'm praying for 30 boxes. We did 25 last year, so you can be with me in prayer about that and see how we go. But let us pray as we come and finish our time with Joseph. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you that you are a God who hears our prayers. That you are a God who holds our life in your hands. The ups and downs, the twists and turns, Father God, but we stay faithful and obedient to you. Thank you, God, that you hear our prayer. Whatever our situation, and this morning, Lord, may your spirit touch our lives. May our ears be open to hear from you. May our eyes be open to hear and see your hand at work here in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. So the, we had a few little glitches, but we got it working this morning. So thank you, Kim, for that. And hopefully we can follow on in what we're doing. So it's the life of Joseph, if you, if you want to call it something. God can transform your life in a matter of moments. It's Genesis uh, chapter 41. We'll, we'll read a chunk of scripture to start us off, to set the scene as we come to a close today. When two full years had passed, Pharaoh had a dream. He was standing by the Nile. When out of the river there came seven cows, sleek and fat, and they grazed among the reeds. After them, seven other ugly and gaunt cows came up out of the Nile and stood beside those on the riverbank. And the cows that were ugly and gaunt ate up the seven sleek fat cows. Then Pharaoh woke up. He fell asleep again and had a second dream. Seven heads of grain, healthy and good, were growing on a single stalk. After them, seven other heads of grain sprouted, thin and scorched by the east wind. The thin heads of grain swallowed up the seven healthy full heads. Then Pharaoh woke up. It'd been a dream. In the morning, his mind was troubled. So he sent for all the magicians and wise men of Egypt. Pharaoh told, Pharaoh told them his dream, but no one could interpret them for him. Then the chief cupbearer said to Pharaoh, Today I am reminded of my shortcomings. Pharaoh was once angry with his servants, and he imprisoned me, the chief baker, and me and the chief baker, in the house of the captain of the guard. And each of us had a dream the same night, and each dream had its own meaning. Now a young Hebrew was there with us, a servant of the captain of the guard. We told him our dreams, and he interpreted them for us giving each man the interpretation of his dream. And things turned out exactly as he had interpreted them to us. I was restored to my position, and the other man was impaled. So, Sarah, so Pharaoh, or Sarah, or Joseph, or Mary, or Martha, but actually Pharaoh, sent for Joseph. <laughs> and he was quickly brought from the dungeon. 
When he had shaved and changed his clothes, because he was a bit stinky, uh, he came before Pharaoh. Pharaoh said, thank you. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream, and no one can interpret it. But I have heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. I cannot do it, Joseph replied to Pharaoh, but God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. This morning we gather to hear from God's word. This morning we gather to make his name great. For God can transform your life in a matter of moments. Joseph was sold as a slave by his brothers, wrongly accused, put in prison. And in prison he was put in charge of prisoners because the hand of God was on his life. So Joseph interpreted dreams while in prison and they came true to the very letter. And now he asked the chief cupbearer to remember him when he got out of jail, if you remember last week. But he forgot him. And in the first verse there of Genesis 41, when two full years, two more years had passed, Pharaoh had a dream, and he was standing by the Nile. Joseph had continued to be imprisoned for two more years. Now Pharaoh had a dream. And in this dream, there are seven great-looking cows, well-fed, in great condition. And then there are seven poor-looking cows, and the poor cows eat the good cows. And he dreams again. He sees seven heads of grain on one stalk, and they are healthy and well-grown, and seven heads of grain appear, and they're thin and scorched and not looking great at all, and they eat the other good grain. In verse 8 we read, In the morning his mind was troubled. You ever had a dream and woke up and been troubled? What was that all about? So he sent for all magicians, the wise men of Egypt. Pharaoh told them his dream, but no one could interpret it for him. He's at a loss. In today's passage, we see that this dream is repeated twice. That, so, that shows you and I that it's very important. God was saying something to Pharaoh. God was saying something important. God was up to something, and he needed Pharaoh on board. Pharaoh calls for all the wise men, but they have no answer. They did not know what the dream meant. Over the last few weeks, I've said that Joseph is a shadow for us as believers. Egypt, this great place of importance, this great place of dreams and visions these people have. And Pharaoh has in front of him all the experts who've come to give him the answer. There is no answer. The world failed Pharaoh. It could not answer his problem. The world failed to help him in his time of need and torment. You don't say, I don't know, to Pharaoh. As a church community, as Christians, we have the answers. Many people have trusted the world and its systems and it's let them down. Let our eyes be open to those people around us, to their lives, to their concerns. We're looking for truth. We're looking for answers. We're looking for direction. Answers to their marriage. Answers to their children. Answers to their future. But the world is full of experts, isn't it? But nothing can fill the void like the transformation of a person's life through the power of God and of faith in Jesus Christ. He has all the brightest minds standing before him. Their lives were spent interpreting dreams and visions and signs and wonders. It was their profession. But they came up with nothing, zero, zip, no. The world's the same today. People can ring a psychic, download an app, visit a guru, meditate, buy a crystal, buy this thing, read your star sign, buy a Buddha, all searching for meaning, all searching for answers, all searching for direction. It comes up empty. For Satan is the deceiver. Don't let those things of the world take hold. 
Jesus is the answer. God's word brings life and change to a broken life. The power of the Holy Spirit brings healing and transformation. You and I connect with people daily who are looking for direction and answers at times in all the wrong places. May we open our eyes and ears to those around us, in our street and in our workplace. As we spend time with them socially, at school, at home, at work. In Genesis 41 verse 9, then, then, good old, good old cupbearer. Oh, yes, I remember this good bloke, yes. It's only been, oh, two years. Today I'm reminded of my shortcomings, I love that. Today I'm reminded that I was a dummy. My job became too important. My life became too busy. I forgot the guy that got me out and told me what was going to happen. Genesis 41, now a young Hebrew was there with us, a servant of the captain of the guard. We told him our dreams and he... And he interpreted them for us, giving each man the interpretation of his dream. And things turned out exactly as he had interpreted them to us. I was restored to my position, and the other man was home. Okay. The chief cupbearer had forgotten Joseph. But the situation in Joseph's, in Pharaoh's life, had reminded him of this young Hebrew who would helped them out and interpreted the dreams, and it came true, just as he said. Let that speak to us this morning, here today. When things are going well, people will forget us. Have no need for God, have no need for church, but when a crisis hits, or something goes wrong in their life, how quickly they will remember you and I, that you went to church, that you have a faith in God, that you mentioned one day that you prayed, that you believed in Jesus, that you have a Bible and you read it, how quickly they will remember when a crisis hits. They may have forgotten you in the good times, but when drama strikes, when a need arises, when their world falls apart, that is the time that they will remember us. And that is the time for us to step up and say, let me help you. Let me care for you. Let me pray for you. I've discovered this in my life has helped me in my time of need. In chapter 41 verse 14, so Pharaoh sent for Joseph. And he was quickly brought from the dungeon when he had shaved and changed his clothes, he came before Pharaoh. The world places great importance on appearance, doesn't it? The clothes you have, the car you drive, the job you do, the house you live in. You might look great on the inside, but may be damaged and hurting and broken, but God can care for you. So Joseph changes, gets ready to meet Pharaoh. He enters the palace with all its wealth and splendor and power all around him. Pharaoh was seen as a god. And there stands before all the wise men. The magicians. Those who could not help their king. And in comes a Hebrew slave who now stands before Pharaoh. Joseph was taken from the prison to the palace because he stayed faithful to God. Verse 15, Pharaoh said to Joseph, I've had a dream and no one can interpret it, but I hear it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. Verse 16 tells us, I cannot do it. Probably not the best way to start. I cannot do it, Joseph replied to Pharaoh. But God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. I cannot do it on my own strength, for it is God working through me that will open Pharaoh's eyes to what the dream means, for what God wants to say at this time. 
and speak into his life and into his world about what is about to happen. The room was filled with all the wise men and magicians. And Joseph says, my God will give you the answer. I cannot do it, but he can. In Genesis 41, 25 to 32, as we read along a bit more of the story. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh are one and the same. God has revealed to Pharaoh what is about what he's about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good heads of grain are seven years. It is one and the same dream. The seven lean, ugly cows that came up after are the seven years, and, are the, and so are the seven worthless heads of grain scorched by the east wind. They are seven years of famine. It is just as I said to Pharaoh, God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Seven years of great abundance are coming throughout the land of Egypt, but seven years of famine will follow them. Then all the abundance in Egypt will be forgotten, and the famine will ravage the land. The abundance in the land will not be remembered, because the famine that follows it will be so severe the reason the dream is given to Pharaoh in two forms is that the matter has been firmly decided by God and God will do it soon. We see in these verses that it is God who is going to act. It is God who will do this. Let us put our faith in Him. Let your life reflect, reflect Him. And let the Holy Spirit of God Sustain you. Continuing to read on from verse 33. And now let Pharaoh look for a discerning and wise man to be put in charge. Pick me! Pick me! No, sorry. <laughs> of all the land of Egypt, let Pharaoh appoint commissioners over the land to take a fifth of the harvest of Egypt during the seven years of abundance. They should collect all the food of these good years that are coming and store up the grain under the authority of Pharaoh to be kept in the city for food. This food should be held in reserve for the country to be used during the seven years of famine that will come upon Egypt so the country may not be ruined by the famine. The plan seemed good to Pharaoh and it seemed good to all the officials as well. Joseph gives the answer to the problem. Hey, this is what you need to do. Here's the dream, here's the solution, here's the action plan. And everyone said, well, that sounds good. When God gives you wisdom, friends, use it. When God opens a door, walk through it. Because your life will be changed in a matter of moments to the glory of God. Pharaoh says, it sounds good to me. And everyone said, yep, that's okay. Who questioned Pharaoh? No one who enjoyed the head on their shoulders. Good idea, mighty Pharaoh. Verse 38, so Pharaoh asked them, can we find anyone like this man? One in whom is the Spirit of God? Even Pharaoh now is recognising the hand of God upon Joseph's life. And the hand of God upon this very situation. Again, 41 and 39. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since God has made it known to you, there is no one so discerning and wise as you. You shall be in charge of my palace, and all my people are to submit to your orders. Only with respect to the throne will I be greater than you. Just digest those. That is powerful. That is amazing. That is miraculous. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring from his finger and put it on Joseph's finger. Like that is powerful. He dressed him in robes of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. He made him ride in his chariot as second in command. And people shouted before him, Make way! Make 
way. Here comes Joseph. The slave boy throwing the pit for dead. And they're putting in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, but without your word, no one will lift a hand or a foot in all of Egypt. Are we excited? Yes, it's a bit warm, isn't it? A bit sweaty, but we're getting there. In a matter of moments, Joseph's life changed. Things might be a struggle. There might be rejection and criticism, a, a difficult situation, but in a matter of moments, God can change my life and your life. At times we wonder what he's up to, but he's at work, behind the scenes. A door of opportunity opens, things fall into place, because God sees what you're up to. Keeping your eyes faithfully on him, and a day will come when the things that were against you will bow before you. Don't doubt, but believe. This is a story of transformation. That in a matter of moments, how God changed Joseph's life. He went from the dungeon to the throne room. He was despised by his brothers, but received by the Pharaoh of Egypt. His rough hands now display a ring of power. His chains of iron are now replaced with gold chains around his neck. His clothes and coat that he lost have, are now the finest garments and a new robe is placed upon him. And those who abused him and forgot him and mis mistreated him now have to make way and bow before him. And one of those people would have been Potiphar's wife. How about that? How's it all happened, friends, as we come to an end? Quite simply because Joseph refused to make the wrong choice. It all stood in the balance when he was tempted. And he said no to Potiphar's wife. Then God has lifted him up because he took a stand and let God lead his life. I love Psalm 40. It's up on the screen there for you. I waited patiently for the Lord. Maybe some of you are sick of being patient. He turned to me. He heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. We may see and fear. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. You know the story of Joseph you know that famine will hit very hard. It hits the land hard. But they are prepared and they are organized because of Joseph's wisdom. Because they planned for what was coming. And eventually Joseph's family arrives, starving, troubled. And, he, and now Joseph is now fully immersed in the Egyptian culture. He would have been unrecognizable. Maybe a bit of nice eyeliner happening, who knows. Have you seen Egyptian photos? <laughs> they come and bow before him, trembling, this mighty man Joseph. They come and show him respect and honour and bow before him, as again this man's dreams come to pass in Genesis 45, verse 4 and 8 to 8. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come close, come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph. Imagine their shock. Imagine their amazement. The one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here. Because it was to save the lives that God sent me ahead of me. For two years now, there has been famine in the land. And for the next five years, there will be no ploughing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So then, it was not you who sent me here, but God. God at work, all the way. He made me father to Pharaoh, lord of his entire household, and the ruler of Egypt. For God can transform your life and situation 
in a matter of minutes. Up on the screen as I finish this morning, you have no idea what God might set in motion through a single act of bold obedience. Friends, God has not forgotten you. God bless you. Amen.